developing musicianship online. Hello and welcome back to DM Online. Today I'm going to explore an area we haven't touched upon yet. The loop library in GarageBand is perhaps one of the areas that people like to go to when they don't have a lot of their own um, musical background to draw upon because it's full of a library of samples and short parts of songs that can be constructed into a much bigger piece of music. We're going to do things a bit differently today. Rather than construct uh, a project live, I'll deconstruct the project and hopefully you'll pick up some tips along the way for how to gain some of the effects. Uh, so I've used the loop library and the automatic drummer to produce a short piece of music, it goes for about a minute 50. Uh, now, if you've downloaded the whole library of sounds, then you will have a substantial loop library. Uh, the loop library can be found by going to the right corner, the right top corner, and the middle icon is the loop browser. Now you can filter the loop browser down to specifics or you can use the just go through one by one. Um, but like I said, this is a massive library of loops and samples. Uh, so that you understand what you're really looking at here, uh, anything that's blue is in WAV format. It's a sample in its traditional sense. Uh, so the program will provide you with samples and will give you the bars, the number of beats for the, for the sample. So in other words, eight beats is gonna be two bars. Uh, 16 is gonna be four bars. Now you'll find those are the blue ones. The green ones are MIDI. So those MIDI ones can be manipulated. You can take notes out, you can transpose, you can alter the pitch, all sorts of things. You can alter the pitch of waves using the mechanism I showed you last time but it's more straightforward using the um, MIDI. So uh, the blue waveforms will come across as just a sound file. They've already added all the effects and things to it, so you're literally getting what it is there, which opens up your plugin rack for a lot of additional effects, if you like. The MIDI will come with a specific MIDI instrument it wants to be played on. So therefore it's going to preload a lot of uh, effects and you won't have as much opportunity to add your own to that unless you take them out. So let's get into the dissection. This project started with the first thing I found in the loop library, which was a collection of words. And the, the reason I wanted to use the words is because of the opportunity to really uh, develop the idea around delay. So once I dropped the words in, I went down to the um, plugins by pressing the dial next to the scissors and added a delay. And in the case of the first few words, I used this infinite repeat one bar, but that actually does infinitely repeat and it tends to get louder as it goes. So if I open up the automation, I've actually pulled the volume out after a period of time so that it didn't get in the way of everything else. Otherwise it would be just three words going and going and going. I didn't want the same delay on the keywords, which in this case I felt were new music. Uh, so I changed the delay and then you'll see the second delay design in the plugins there. So this delay is one called quarter falling pitch, quarter note falling pitch. So theoretically, after delays, the note should get lower and lower. Um, I also manipulated the actual pitch or of those spoken words. So if I go to the scissors and go down to the bottom where it says transpose, you'll find it's been transposed by seven steps in the case of new music. Uh, attention, spoken word was also adjusted by four. So that just takes the, the sample and makes it a little bit more sci-fi rather than just someone saying a word. So this was the result of just the spoken words in the introduction. Attention.
incredible attention experience incredible attention experience incredible attention new music 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 Okay, going on to the drummer. The drummer was the second thing to come in, but I really wanted to control how the drummer contributed to the bigger picture. I didn't want to put anything more than bass drum in at the start. So I was able to do that by going in and switching off the drums I didn't want and leaving the kick drum by itself. Um, but you'll see I have also was finding that even though I said I only wanted kick, the automatic drummer was pretty crash cymbals in. So I then went through and chose the cymbals on and switched them off. And I also turned the cymbals down using that to make sure there was no possibility of cymbals coming in. Now again, I was exploring delay and I really wanted this, this spacey, sci-fi kind of strange uh, world that was unsettled to start with. So I added in this additional delay, an eighth note delay. Uh, I played around with this deviation. So, uh, so if you open up the uh, tape delay here, you'll see I've increased the deviation as it goes. So when you hear the kick drum, then that's the, that's the deviation. This is the effect of the drums, or just the kick drum with a delay symbol switched off and you'll notice that the delay becomes more complex as it goes through. So it's quite measured at the start and then becomes um, additional hits and then becomes almost like a drum roll. Uh, and then I tapered off the volume so that the, 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 the mess that was at the, the end uh, did not become conflicting with the other things going on. The float pad was just like a synth, spacey synth sound, but I didn't necessarily want it to be so dry and dull. So I added a phaser in there which gives you this sense of the sound shifting between the speakers and moving around. It's more of a spatial sort of sound effect and it sounds like this. And you'll notice the crescendo. Uh, so the crescendo is gained by manipulating the volume of the track. So combined, it gives us this effect. Attention, incredible. Attention, experience. Incredible. Attention, experience. Incredible. Attention, new music. music, music. Now, moving on to where the piece picks up tempo. Um, so this is a combination of two things. First of all, with the drummer, I create a second drummer channel with the same drum part as the first drum channel, but I took all the switching off and switched it back on again. Now you'll see that there's uh, three layers of automation here of things being switched on. That's because later on, I switched them all off in order to get the build up of having just kick into kick and snare into kick, snare and cymbals. So that's why I had to put the automations in for later on. Uh, aside from that, there's a, a volume tweak, it was just getting lost in the mix, so, so I opted for volume. I could have EQ'd it, uh, but I haven't gone through EQ, so I didn't do that. Um, so then there's the bass, and the bass. Uh, came with a mini Q lead as its sound 
but it was a little bit uh, thin. So what I was able to do, because it's MIDI, I was able to copy the four channels and duplicate them underneath in the synth bass that came up later when I put the disco pick bass in. And the combination of the synth bass with the mini Q gave me punch, but also gave me depth, that sub bass depth. So this is the combination of those sounds together with the pad coming in and out in a crescendo. One of the things you need to be conscious of when you're writing music is contrasting sections and the music developing. Now I was still trying to go with background style music so I didn't really want to have a prominent melody that was creating this, com this contrast. So I've used a double time drum. So it's the same drum part but I've just selected the double time uh, and, the, and boosted the complexity so that it's, it's more driving. Uh, I changed the bass line and I've dropped in a guitar instead of the pad to, because the guitar came with a bit more rhythm. But again, I didn't want the guitar to be dry um, because the guitar sounds, when you're going to combine different guitar sounds, sometimes it's good to have a commonality in the sound quality. So I've used the flanger across all the guitar so that I get that um, similarity between the two different guitar loops that I've chosen. So this is uh, from where the guitar enters. In the middle section, uh, music often, particular pop music often has a bridge and one of the popular things to do in bridges is a breakdown. So what I've done in the middle is I've taken a uh, drum part out altogether, broken down to just bass and guitar with a new introduction of a guitar line and then built it up gradually to the finish. So that's why the drums were layered with different instruments off and were increasing in complexity as it built towards the end. Uh, and I also used this reverse symbol. So the, the symbol itself is not a reverse symbol, it's a normal symbol. Um, but one of the options under the scissors is an option that says reverse playback. So you can take a crash symbol and reverse it. Um, the reverse symbol is very, very popular in digital music to get those really big climactic moments where the music seems to grow out of nowhere and then go shook and then just come to a sudden stop. Uh, in this case, I chose not to do the sudden stop. I actually led it into a crash cymbal uh, on both occasions. So this is the uh, closing portion. Um, so if you just listen out for the, the, the reverse cymbal in here, uh, I think you'll understand the sort of effect that I was going for. Okay, and that is the whole project dissected. Um, now there are many things I could do on top of this to mix it down more thoroughly, um, but today I really wanted you to see all of these interactivities between the automations and the effects and the um, different loops that are already there that you yourself could be accessing uh, to create your own projects. So hopefully this inspires you to go and create your own piece of music Thanks for joining me. Please subscribe if you enjoy what I'm offering and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Attention incredible. Attention experience. Incredible. Attention experience. Incredible. Attention new music.
Adiós.